Do you ever feel like you are droning in data? Hi, and welcome to our video about Metabase, the free and open source business intelligence tool that can help you make sense of all that information. With Metabase, you can create visualization, dashboards and reports that give you insights into your business operations and performance. Best of all, it's easy to use and doesn't require extensive technical knowledge. In this video, we'll explore how to get started with Metabase and show you some of its key features. Metabase is available as a web-based tool or as a downloadable application that you can install on your server or computer. Once you have it set up, you can connect it to a variety of databases, such as MySQL, MongoDB, Postgres, SQL Server. It can also be connected to some data warehouse like Snowflake and Google Analytics. Metabase is free, comes with a cloud version with a free tier, or you can host the on-premise version. And together we will see the self-hosted open source version. Let's set up our instance of Metabase. Go to LSEO and hit login. Once you are connected, go to deploy my first service, search for Metabase, select, and next. Create service. Now we will receive an email with our credentials to access to Metabase. Okay, I just received the email, so I click here to get the password. Now I copy the password here and go to my instance. The username is my email address and the password is in my clipboard. I can hit sign in. Okay, so when we arrive for the first time, if we didn't connect a database, we have a sample database. So it's here and we will play with it to demonstrate Metabase features. There are even examples to show you what you can build with it. So those are the examples. If we click on accounts, we have a dashboard containing the number of account, uh, the number of new accounts in the last 30 days and the user growth. I guess it's based on the timeline. And here you can select the period. You also have the location uh, and a lot of information that were only built using Metabase from the data set that you have. After the examples, you have Metabase tips, which offer two main guides, get started with Metabase and a tour of Metabase. I recommend you to read them before jumping too much on Metabase. There might be uh, useful features you don't know their existence. So read the documentation is always a good thing to do. Okay, so let's start using Metabase. We can hit new and we have the choice between question, SQL query, dashboard, collection or model. Collection is where we are here. So it's empty. It's like folders and we will use question. We select the data we will use. It's at the starting point, but of course we can link multiple table together. Let's filter on the premium account. So let's say it's plan and it's people with business or premium plan. We will select the metrics we want. So, okay, let's just count the rows of account we have and hit visualize. We have currently 117 users that have premium subscriptions. So we can go on visualization and instead of just displaying the number on that question, we can use like a progress and say, okay, my goal for my business is to have 1000 subscription. Let's choose another color. And here we can see where we are on this goal. Instead, we want the percentage. We are 11% to reach this goal. And we can combine all of those questions into dashboards to have a clear overview on how our business is performing. Let's keep it to normal and let's save this question. We won't add it to a dashboard yet. Let's go back to our analytics and let's create another question to see how it works. So now we will say we want the payments per month. So we go to in the invoice, we will take all of them. We want the sum of payment and we will group them by the date received. And you can see we can select what period we want. I will choose per month. 
Okay, let's visualize it. Here you can see the graph with all the payments across all the months. By the way, it's in the future. You can see it either with a table view or a line graph view. You can download the results, so a CSV, XLS or JSON. You can even have alerts, so I need to save it first. Set up an alert. You say the frequency when it will check that we hit the threshold and you can send email to you or Slack messages based on when something reaches a threshold. You can share it. Everything is shareable, so dashboard and questions. When you share it, you can make it with a public link or embed it into your website or even in an application. And here you have events. So you can even add event to explain why the metrics here are jumping. So we can see that every summer the sales are getting higher. So we can explain it and visually our team will be able to understand that metric instead of just visualizing it and guessing why it happens. Okay, let's go back to our analytics. Now we have two questions. We can try to add a last question. So we will see the number of products. So still we will do uh, the count of rows, how many products. And we will group them by their creation date. So we can try like to combine those metrics with the amount of invoice paid because we will have two graphs and we can compare them at one place when we will create a dashboard but we will see it later okay save not now okay so now let's create our dashboard so let's call it business analytics we can add a description select the collection where it will be located and by default, it's empty. So we're opening it in editing mode. So we can add question. So here is our goal. We can move it, drag and drop it. Okay. I will add the total of payments. Let's make it bigger. And the number of products. And here the dates are not linked. The products are in the past and the payments are in the future. But if we had real uh, smart data, we could try to understand what metrics impact the other and do very smart BI. So, okay, here we added our question. We can, by the way, uh, edit some visual options so we can rename it. So here it's total payments per month. We can add a goal line uh, let's say 180. So here it's drawing a goal line. The goal label is minimum amount of sales. And here it's displayed. You can select a lot of parameters to display the way that best suits your needs. Okay, let's make down. Let's edit this one. So new products per month we also can create a goal line we will set we need five products per month we can add the number of products to be more easy to read okay done so you see we have complete control about what we are displaying just based on data we have from our, our database. And it's saving a lot of time instead of building dashboard with code. We also can add filter. So let's say select time. We will say we want the metrics for a single quarter. So we define what date in what question we will use. So here we will say it's um, created at, date received, and created at. And we hit done. Here we are in editing mode, so nothing is happening. But if we hit save, now we are in view mode. And here we can select different dates. 
and it will impact what we see. But as we saw, uh, the new products are in the past and the payments are in the future. This is not a real case we can see. Okay, now let's see what else we can do. We can go to a new SQL query. Here we can write uh, SQL requests. So let's select, but I don't know my table. So I can start typing and it's showing me what I can do. So like account, but this is not practical. So here on the right, you have access to the tables. So, okay, so I want to select everything from accounts where, and I don't know the columns. So I go to accounts and here I have all the information. So I will take the one that canceled at is nil. So I don't want the one that are canceled. I run it and I have all the people that ha haven't canceled their subscriptions. And I can save it and use it in the dashboard as another question. The only difference is I'm not using the visual editor, but I'm writing my own SQL query. I also have access to variables that I can reuse. So we have an example here. Instead of writing hard coding um, here, it's category. We can make it a variable that we would be able to use in the dashboard and switch other this variable. So all non canceled accounts. Okay, now let's have a look at the last piece because collection is what we are in our analytics. We have model. And model is something very simple. Either you do a request or so a native query, but we won't do it, or you use the notebook editor. And what is it? It's just you have your data. Let's take our account and we want to join it to something else. So we, with the invoice and how do we link them? So on an account, the link is the ID and the invoice is the account ID. Okay, I will, I will take everything. So my model is just a line containing an account and one invoice. So you can use it as a data set to answer other questions. Okay, let's have a look at the settings. You have the account settings. So here it's filled by default when we set up our instance. We can use different language. We have the audit trail of a login and some notifications, but we don't have yet. On the admin setting, what would interest us the most is to add a database. So you can select the kind of database you want to use. Let's say Postgres. We will just need to add our information to connect. So the hold, the poll, the database name, the user and password. Don't forget uh, either to open your database on the internet, which is not very secure and I wouldn't recommend, or to put Metabase directly in the same VPC than your database, which is what I recommend. You can also set a Slack credentials for the feature I showed you earlier with notifications of events. For the authentication, we use the Metabase account, the admin one, but you can add Google to be able to connect. Wrapping up, Metabase is a powerful and flexible business intelligence tool that can help you make informed decisions based on your data. Whether you're a small business owner or a data analyst, Metabase is a tool worth exploring. We hope this video has given you a good introduction to Metabase and its features. If you want to learn more, you can check out the resources on their website or set up an instance and give it a try. If you want to discover new free open source software, I highly recommend you to watch this video here.